Here in the luxury community, it's not uncommon to find creators using the word investment when used to describe their designer purchases. But when you really think about it, when you really have to put your money where your mouth is and go ahead and sell your items, are these items truly worth the investment? Because as somebody who is both a creator and consumer of luxury content and goods, it's very clear to me from my personal experience and from looking online that clearly some luxury items are more valuable than others and therefore better investments than others. For example, clearly a Balenciaga handbag is not going to sell as well as an Hermes Birkin bag is. So in amongst all of the noise buried within wish lists, new collections, limited edition collaborations that creators are always talking about and trying to divert our attention. I wanted to use today's video as an opportunity to take a step back and take a moment to reflect on what actually is worth buying in the luxury realm for the long term because it's all well and good to have trendy items that are really hot at the moment but when you come to sell them because you need the money that they are then worthless and get a fraction of the price that you had paid for it and I thought long and hard from my personal experiences of what does well what doesn't and pull together a list of luxury items that I believe are worth the money and are worth the financial investment. For me personally, I don't buy to sell. I just learn about these things so that I am a fully aware consumer and potentially, you know, if I need to liquidate money in the future, I know that the money that I spent, I will get at least what I paid for, if not more. And it's not good enough to have like a Gucci Marmot bag that you can barely shift for a quarter of the value that you paid for it. So with that in mind, there are a few disclaimers that are due at this stage. First of all being that number one, this video is not designed to be a financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. These are just my own opinion. And so please take it in that regard. And this segues nicely into my next disclaimer that what I am proposing in terms of investment items is not for professional resellers or anybody looking to make a quick buck. These require a lot of upfront cost. They require many years for the items to appreciate as well as an element of risk because you don't know if the tides will turn with the item that you are looking to sell. So this advice is again targeted towards those of you who want the longevity for the items that you probably already want in your collection but you're willing to wait it out or just to have that asset appreciate. It's also for people who are not very risk averse because ultimately there is risk in anything that you invest in. And then the final disclaimer to make is that you should definitely do your due diligence and research to understand what you are investing in, a luxury or otherwise, because ultimately appreciating assets are influenced by the fundamentals of supply and demand. So in other words, the luxury items only worth what someone else is willing to pay for it. Let's start off with the five kind of luxury fashion items that I have noted are good investments. Now, of course, there will be outliers of what will hold their value and sell exceedingly well. There's always some sort of limited edition collaboration or just some sort of sleeper hit, but we're not kind of going with the exceptions to the rule. And so I have noted that these five categories have done consistently well either in retaining their value or exceeding that value. And the first one I don't think anyone will really be surprised about is my suggestion and that is fine jewellery. What I mean by fine jewellery is that made of precious metals so you can think gold and platinum as the best investment metals for jewellery and then there's also other things like gemstones, other precious stones in your jewellery collection like you know your rubies, your sapphires, your emeralds etc. So let's start off with gold and gold is the classic everybody I'm sure your mother your grandma has a gold necklace or some sort of other uh, gold jewellery and obviously gold is valuable for a reason not just because of the gold standard as it relates to our currency but the fact that it doesn't have many practical applications in everyday life like you know less precious metals such as copper has this actually protects the value of the gold from economic downturns and recessions so its value will have a direct relationship with the market price of gold which has always been consistent and consistently high and that leads me on to the next metal which is that of platinum it's really highly regarded out of all the silver white precious metals platinum does consistently well it retains its value the color also does not change and while it does have more practical application as gold, it's still more valuable and, you know, less available than the other types of metals. So any fine jewellery pieces that feature gold or platinum 
very pure, very high grade, are going to sell quite well. And so those examples of precious metals aside, we can now pivot to gems and rare gemstones have really good histories of increasing in value over time because they're also compact and portable and private. So like I mentioned before, rubies and sapphires, emeralds and garnets, pearls, they all retain their value and their value is retained whether they are made by a big name like a Tiffany or Cartier versus also smaller kind of artisanal brands as well. As long as you can get verification of their authenticity and the purity of your stones and the metals, you will have very safe investments that you could liquidate at a moment's notice because there will always be a buyer for precious metals and precious stones that are in jewellery. I also believe certain brands of fine jewellery will allow for better investments. So you can think at the moment of Van Cleef Arpel, Cartier perhaps, Tiffany & Co. Those big brands consistently are very hard to buy from. They're almost like the Chanel and Hermes's of the fine jewelry game, right? They essentially have waiting lists. Their items are incredibly limited edition or hard to get. And so therefore, when it comes to reselling, I've noticed this myself on the resale market, they always go at least almost 2X their price. So pay attention to those brands, the collections that are coming out of it, because even if they don't have those precious metals perhaps, and it's just the name, sometimes they can also do well. I've seen Tiffany necklaces that are just silver go for quite above their you know actual recommended retail price because of the name Tiffany. Obviously fine jewellery is one that over time people pass down as heirlooms and ultimately there will always be a demand for those items because of the raw materials that make them up as well as the status and notoriety of a brand if indeed you did buy one from a very high class and exclusive house. So fine jewellery aside, let's actually move into our next type of item, which is a great segue because it's related, and that is luxury timepieces or watches. And so watches have been known for many, many years now, almost centuries at the stage, to be very good heirloom pieces and therefore investment pieces. What has to be said though is that you will need a good understanding of the luxury watch market to know which ones to invest in because it's not a one size fits all, not every single one will get your return on investment. Some are more equal than others, if you know what I mean. But if you play this right and you pick the right watches, you may get at least 2x your money back. And that being said, you should also have some pretty deep pockets if you're gonna invest in a very high quality or limited edition timepiece because £5,000 is probably the minimum buy and that also depends on the brand too. So beyond that, if you're looking for a watch that is even more coveted or, and potentially valuable, you're looking at upwards of £10,000 because those are likely to be from brands or in models that are very sought after and that can have the potential to appreciate and some watch brands are also known to be considered better quality investment than others. So examples of that are Rolex, like the one I'm wearing right now. Omegas are good, Patek Philippe's are good, but you really do need an in-depth knowledge and experience of what does sell in the watch market. I mean, I myself, I, I think that I am a good luxury all-rounder when it comes to just general knowledge of what works. And when it comes to luxury watches, that in itself is its own community that needs a lot of detail as well. There's so much to do with the movements, the materials, the other kind of dials. And you also want to make sure that you maintain original packagings and paperwork and things like that to make sure that the watch is in excellent condition. So all those things being in order, watches should be a very good long-term investment. They also make, like I mentioned before, great heirloom pieces for your children. And of course, I know not everybody buys to sell, but at least you know with certain watches, you could potentially liquidate your investment to get at least the money that you paid, if not more. And now moving on to item number three, and it's a category that I'm sure none of you will again be surprised at all about me mentioning, especially given that it's usually the topic on this channel, and that is handbags. But like the watches and the fine jewellery, you need to know what you're doing in this area because otherwise it's a little bit of a wild, wild west out here. That being said, if you do know your stuff and you know what works, what people want, what endures, handbags could be one of the best designer items for you to invest in. Because while fashion trends and tastes are highly changeable and volatile, You'll notice outside of trends, there will always be a constant middle of what is classic, what is timeless, 
and those are the items to go for. And yes, there will be some trends that will earn the big bucks, will be limited edition again, there will always be outliers. But if you don't buy right and you only buy trends, when they move inevitably into the other direction, you might be left literally holding the bag. Because take it from me as somebody who sold a couple of handbags in the past just because they'd had no need for them anymore, they barely got back a third of their retail price. These handbags, you know, while they're lower price points than the uh, fine jewelry and the luxury watches. If you get this wrong, you will still have been forking out several thousands of pounds potentially or something that is basically worthless on the resale market. Go for something classic and go for something that is known to have held its value over time. I'm talking about the Holy Grail brands, your, whether people like it or not, Chanel's like the classic flat reissue, some other new classics as well. I'm talking Hermes, whether I like it or not, the Hermes Birkin, Kelly, Constance, they notoriously are hard to get, they hold their value. Those are just some starters for 10 that you can do research on. I'm not gonna go into all the details, I would be here for quite a while. And you know, if you can't afford to get them brand new, you could always get them either vintage or pre-love because certain brands will have more investment value than others. Certain models also have better investment than others, certain colors and hardwares and things like that sizes as well so these are all factors that you'll need to take into consideration however the big brands and the models that i've mentioned before are usually pretty consistent in their resale value obviously there will be certain limited edition colorways materials collaborations that you can look for and some certain vintage pieces that will come back into circulation that'll be incredible condition and you might get ahead of a certain trend and you also want to be very very comfortable in holding your item for many years without having the chance to liquidate it to give your handbags the opportunity to appreciate to monitor the markets because again it's not a get rich quick scheme and you've also got to make sure you've got as much paperwork and you keep the item in pristine condition etc those will also add to the value of your item you do not want to go through all of this trouble and get an item that is fake now moving on to item number four and this one is a little bit more volatile in terms of the investment return than the other three and we'll talk about why and that is ready to wear now this could be blazers overcoats you could even class i suppose you know your jumpers and things like that i'm predominantly talking about outerwear though and especially in items that are known to be super classic again timeless or potentially very distinctive to a certain fashion house and this one's more of a challenge because what is in style today is not the same as what was in style 10 or 15 years ago or maybe even 10 or 15 years from now so this really does need a good eye and somewhat i guess a little bit of a crystal ball or just really good luck to make profitable investment returns especially when it comes to ready to wear an item that is naturally you know going to be on someone's body it might have even signs of wear on it compared to a handbag which goes over your arm right or a piece of jewelry which will literally just rests on your wrist luxury ready to wear is something that might pill it might bobble i'm thinking with this one the best bets are to go probably vintage so i'm thinking chanel jackets do quite well especially if you buy early and the items are in good condition or have not been worn at all or i'm thinking about higher quality items could be like a distinctive leather jacket from a certain fashion house if you do it right I think you can make some money back on your items. And then the final item, number five, at least within this fashion category, is again, another potentially volatile category, dependent on the style, potentially the brand, and that is footwear. And of course, with footwear, by the nature of the item, it is worn on the ground, it touches the ground. But if you have not worn the shoes, and it is, you know, very sought after for one reason or another, whether it's a luxury collaboration or it's limited edition, then this can work. I used to be quite a sneakerhead, less so nowadays, but you know, I was very much into the Yeezys and I have in the past bought Yeezys and sold those, not necessarily to make money, but because I just bought wrong sizes and things like that, but they have resold very well. The sneakerhead community in itself is again, a whole can of worms that you can open up around, you know, specific designer, the specific model of materials and things like that. And if you get in early to the, the sales and things and then resell afterwards, that can be quite profitable. And I know from personal experience, having even bought on resale, 
scale that some sneakers can be crazy in price they can be up to 10x their price the good thing about sneakers is that unlike the other categories which can often go into the thousands of pounds in terms of an upfront investment sneakers designer or otherwise more high street options like your nikes your adidas these maybe only require a couple hundred or less in terms of investment up front. I've seen from previous collections with the Chanel Pharrell collaboration sneakers, those have gone into the thousands despite being only a few hundred pounds to buy. There's other Louis Vuitton and Virgil Abloh sneakers as well that do quite well. So if you do your research, these can be very good. So now that we've finished with the five luxury fashion items, let me just go into the two, I suppose, more luxury wildcard categories. And I just want to share it, just to add a little bit of dimension to an otherwise more, you know, fashion oriented channel and content. So the sick item that I want to talk about and it's worth the investment is fine art and i know this might be a surprise especially again because this channel is dedicated towards luxury fashion but if we're talking about true luxury i don't think anyone will be surprised that fine art has a history of being known as a luxury item that appreciates in value and as we know with most investments the increased demand of a certain piece of art or a certain artist will increase the appreciation of that particular asset and as art is by nature a luxury item it's no different in the approach that you need to take when you are choosing which piece to buy and so some tips are probably going to be something like you know buying something that you love and will want to keep as a long-term investment because with art you're not wearing it you put it on a wall or you put it in storage so something you don't mind looking at something that you don't mind to keep if it indeed does not play out you also want to make sure that you buy an original that's authenticated, that you have the documentation for. You probably also want to buy a piece of art from somebody quite well known, or at least up and coming, that you see will potentially retain or increase their value. But conversely, if you go for an emerging artist, then you might have more of an opportunity for an upside in comparison because, you know, if people flock to that artist and inflate the price, that is more investment return than somebody who is safe, where the price is already quite high. And obviously you want to make sure your certificates of authenticity and proof of purchase things are retained. You also want to make sure your artwork is not damaged through kind of weather or otherwise. And so you want to make sure it's also stored appropriately through framing or other security measures to protect your investment. But, you know, those are just some top level tips. There are plenty more. There are obviously art dealers and specialists around that have a lot more wealth of expertise than I do. It's just like a bird's eye view. But I wanted to mention fine art because I think when people think of luxury one of the biggest categories one of the biggest markets in the world is that of art dealing and no one really thinks about it because it's just another underworld that I have no idea how it works but as we all know it goes for a lot of money guys and then the last item that I want to mention in this video number seven which is again a wild card but still very much a luxury item nonetheless is that of the luxury car now obviously with average automobiles that we're using for every day, you know, your Fords, your Hondas, your Toyotas, those are depreciating assets because you're using them for your daily purposes. And they are not luxury in any sense of the imagination. They are literally just getting you from A to B. They are not sought after. They're not luxury in any way. But on the other hand, cars that are classic automobiles or vintage or limited edition, super hard to get, super cars potentially as well, these are a different story. That in itself, again, another underworld that I am by no means privy to. But the fact is that these cars sell and appreciate in value significantly. Obviously, only a handful of them will be profitable longer term luxury investments. You will need to pick the right ones. And there's a lot of factors co to consider in that vein, like scarcity, the brand, the age, the reputation or image of a certain brand, the desirability. These are all important and they'll impact the value of the car. And, you know, examples could be your Porsches, your Ferraris. Those cars are notoriously hard to get. There's wait lists. There's other games that you have to play as well. But Sometimes those cars, even when you drive them out, they won't decrease in value, they'll actually appreciate because it's very, very coveted and hard to get. So if you do have crazy amounts of money that are much higher than the <laughs> categories that I've mentioned before, if you have that knowledge and you're a car enthusiast, this is something that could potentially be quite 
profitable as well. So those are my seven luxury items that are worth the investment. Of course, there are going to be other categories that are worth mentioning. And if you feel like I've missed one out, please do leave them into the comments. But that being said, I will leave this video right here. Thank you as always for watching and I'll catch you in my next one.